when we open our minds, when we open our hearts, God comes to us now and listens to us, loves us and forgives us. He makes us whole. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes from James's letter, which is considered to be one of the first letters of the New Testament, um, to be written somewhere around about AD 44 to 48. And James uses strong words to refer to Jesus, our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. The unity and openness of the early church was shocking in the ancient world. But the unity didn't automatically come. As this command from James shows, the apostles had to teach the early church. He said, never hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ without partiality. No discrimination. Maybe please now hear that reading which Calvin is going to come and read for us. Thank you. Morning, church. The reading is taken from James, chapter 1 to 10. No, verses 1 to 10. <laughs> and... Uh, and and verses 14 to 17. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12, 12 tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. But when he asks, you must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does, The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in high positions. That the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away like a wildflower for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossoms fall and its beauty is destroyed in the same way. The rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under the trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Verses 14 to 17. Each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived by my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. 
God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that reading. We're going to stand again and sing a hymn that calls the church to be the agent of change and reconciliation in the struggle against injustice and hunger. The Church of Christ in Every Age, number 415. coming to a section in Mark's Gospel where Mark wants us to focus to be the people that show the glory of God. We will hear Jesus has done all well. The good news is that sorry, the good news is so good that it overwhelms those who experience it. He is making all things new. This is a new creation. Brenda is going to come and read that uh, passage from Mark now. A woman's faith. Then Jesus left and went away to the territory near the city of Tyre. He went into a house and didn't want anyone to know he was there, but he couldn't stay hidden. A woman whose daughter had an evil spirit in her heard about Jesus and came to him at once and fell at his feet. The woman was a Gentile, born in the region of Phoenicia in Syria, she begged Jesus to drive the doom out of her daughter. But Jesus answered, Let us first feed the children. It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Sir, she answered, even the dogs under the table eat the children's leftovers. So Jesus said to her, Because of that answer, go back home 
where you will find that the demon has gone out of your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed. The demon had indeed gone out of her. Thank you, Brenda, again for that uh, reading. It's our turn to uh, stand and sing again. A hymn that is described as a direct and uncomplicated celebration of the proclamation of the good news. We stand and sing, The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy, number 255. During the late 1980s, I made many visits to the city of Berlin, a city not just divided by ideology, but by a concrete barrier that weaved through the city. It served as an ugly symbol of what was then the Cold War. I made visits to both sides of the barrier, East and West Berlin, a barrier protected by barbed wire, dogs, landmines and soldiers. The contrast of life and living standards couldn't have been greater. The affluent West Berliners, leading a very efficient, as Germany, Germans do, European way of life, and the socialist-controlled East Berliners, who experienced extreme pain and anguish of poverty, shortages of basic goods, and a daily life that was continually interrupted by strikes because of social and political unrest. Although this wasn't a barrier erected by the East or West Berliners, it was created by nations in a period of global tension between the United States and, Soviet, and the Soviet Union and their respective allies, including the United Kingdom. 
It may have given solace to those nations against actual war, but it brought a very real war to its people, a class and social war. This class divide is not something new. In our reading from James this morning, we read about the problems which the early Christians had and how they discriminated against the poor. For James, faith is what is operative in a person. A life living faith in the church. Social class is the issue which James uses to question whether the faith actually shapes lives is a faith in Jesus Christ or something else. Do people say one thing and do another? James is concerned that if faith is reduced to saying a few words like I believe, then the expression, the doing of faith, can be reduced to a few words as well. Like telling a hopeless person, have a nice day. For James, faith begins with the word of God that gives us all new life. A balance of being and doing as we strive to what John Wesley described as Christian perfection. Wesley emphasised the need for both personal piety and social justice. That there was no holiness but social holiness. And that our faith cannot be lived in isolation. So the first thing that we can understand from scripture this morning is that James urges us to act without prejudice but act we must the differentiation of people by virtue of where they live is nothing new as human beings we are very good at creating barriers divisions and looking at ways to categorise people into perhaps good and bad. Sadly, the deciding factor of who is in and who is out often rests with those who make the decision in believing that they are not like us. In Mark's Gospel, where people live is important too. He makes a point of telling us that Jesus goes to places like Tyre and Sidon. Jesus has gone north. He's now in a country that we now know as the Lebanon. That's Gentile country. It is as if he has gone across a wall. I went through the Berlin Wall in a car and under the Berlin Wall in a train. I guess Jesus just went on Shanks' pony. I felt, very, I, f- I felt very out of place in East Berlin. I wonder how Jesus felt. He was no longer with like-minded Jewish people, but different people with different ways. Gentiles were regarded as being of little worth, not because they weren't Jewish, but they were assumed to be morally deficient. I crossed the wall for a specific purpose, to work. Jesus had up to now spent his time ministering in the Jewish provinces, drawing larger and larger crowds. So was he exhausted and decided that he needed a rest or a holiday? Or was it a time for him to continue his work elsewhere? 
if it was for arrest, it didn't work. His fame precedes him. And a woman comes because her daughter is ill. We're not told what's wrong with her, but she's desperate for help. She's begging Jesus. And as any parent would do in those circumstances, she makes a big thing of it. She was a Gentile, a foreigner, a Canaanite, ancient enemies of Jesus' people. Jesus' response, as we heard, is let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. How rude, Jesus, you might think, calling somebody a dog under any circumstances. Maybe Jesus is saying that the Jews, the children, have first claim on him. Only when they have been fed can the little dogs, others, come to eat. He's saying that the Gentiles will get their opportunity to know him, to know God, but later. Normally, when Jesus makes these clever statements, that's it. And the person turns around and goes away with their tail between their legs. On this occasion, this woman is having none of it. She doesn't lash out at Jesus, call him names, or say he's lacking in compassion. Indeed, she goes along with the doggy metaphor replying, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. If anybody's got dogs like we have in our house, that's very true when our grandchildren come round and half the food that's on the table lands up on the floor. And the dogs have a great feed. The woman certainly believes that Gentiles need to be included in what Jesus has started. And she wants it. She wants it now. Jesus credits this woman for her reasoning of the word of God. But she also has great faith. Because she goes, trusting in Jesus' words. He has given her daughter the gift of healing. Without saying any healing words or making a home visit. But his word, that it has happened. Has she just helped Jesus redefine who receives grace, all people, and most importantly, when? Now. Today we see rises in nationalism Racism, xenophobia and anarchy in the Western culture. Often religion is wrapped up in this. Exclusion and isolation continue for many people who often lack the basics of human living. So again, let's look at scripture and see what we can take. Jesus is clear that these walls that we build these barriers, have no place with God. We are all included in his gift, no matter what our nationality, ethnicity or social status is. God's beloved children come from every tribe, language and nation. The good news is that as this woman reminded Jesus... Even the crumbs under the table would be enough for our healing and salvation. After this encounter, Jesus moves on again. He cures a man who cannot hear and barely speak. Mark will go on later and tell us he feeds 4,000 people. These events occur in a region populated chiefly by the Gentiles. 
Although Mark doesn't call attention to their ethnic identity, it seems Jesus takes the challenge of this mother's wisdom to heart. The timetable has been accelerated. Gentiles receive blessings too, even now. The woman's persistence benefits more than just the little girl. Our scripture concludes with Mark's words about Jesus' healing of the deaf man. He has done everything well. We've been reading and we'll continue to read about these sicknesses, these diseases, these disabilities and these walls, barriers that we erect. Not all visible like the Berlin Wall. Why do we see these physical ailments and problems and barriers? They are us spiritually. The difficulties and the corruption of the body represents our spiritual standing with God. We all need healing. Jesus is crossing all national and political barriers of his day to bring healing to all people, showing the works of God that his glory can be revealed to all. Today is also a reminder that none of us are God's favourites. We all come to God's table by grace, a table that we cannot imagine how big it is. Then we must remember that Jesus does all things well. Jesus will heal us, open our ears, and release our tongues. But we must be like the Canaanite woman, understanding, understand we are undeserving, with no rightful place at the Lord's table, but rather than letting us eat some crumbs, we can feast on the banquet of the Lord's table, where all are welcome. Amen. We come to our time of prayer for our intercessions and the Lord's Prayer. There is a, a bidding, Lord, in your mercy, if you would please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs, loving our neighbours as ourselves. We offer our thanksgiving and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the universal church, the body of Christ, all so different, yet one, through your Son. We ask for strength and protection, especially for those who face persecution because of their faith in you. We ask that you give your church vision and unity as we recover from the effects of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for the different ministries in this circuit and for our ministers, local preachers, worship leaders and lay workers. Help us, Lord, to seek you in all that we do, using the gifts that you have so generously given so that we may serve this community. Lord, in your mercy. Father of justice, we pray for all nations and those that lead them. We pray for those in situations of captivity, in whatever sense of the word. For those who cannot see a way through the darkness. For those who feel their lives 
are in pieces. We ask especially for you to be with the people of Afghanistan at the moment. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for those who feel ignored, those whose problems are swept under the mat, those who are excluded by society, whose cries for help are downplayed or devalued. We pray for those who feel they do not have a place to belong, a safe place to find support and friendship. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father of creation, we lift before you this world and its resources. Help us to care for it and each play our part to repair the damage we have done. We pray for those places that have been devastated and are experiencing suffering through earthquakes, fire, drought and floods. Thinking now of the east coast of the United States and particularly the state of Louisiana. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we bring before you all those who are in any kind of need. Those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. And those who are grieving. We remember all those who have recently died or have anniversaries at this time. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those people we know who need to feel your love and comfort. We ask that you touch their lives, that they may know your healing and friendly hands. Lord, in your mercy. And we conclude our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God for all of our prayers and praises this morning. Amen. Amen. Can we have our notices and uh, any good news that we have this morning, please? Morning. Morning. A, a mini Arnstorm pro project exhibition reopens in, in Rotherhithe, my neck of the woods, on tu Tuesday this week. If you, you can come down independently if you want to want to some, have somebody to talk it over with and to talk, talk about the um, motifs I'm using, the Chrisman designs, and some of them. Then just give, drop me a line. My, um, my email address is on the uh, is in, is in the notices, and hope to see some some, some of you down there. And we do continue knitting and crocheting towards our, our, our yarn storm. Eventually, the yarn storm here when we're back in the building in due course. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris, for leading us in worship. And we'd like to cons um, extend our congratulations to you for being yeah. now a fully fledged local preacher. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thanks, everyone, for coming today. Welcome, everyone, anyone who's been away for whatever reason. Welcome back, because uh, I've been in and out, so I haven't seen some of you for a long time. Um, I'd like to thank John and Sylvie for playing, John for our technical work, um, 
Bonnie and Lorna are arranging the flowers. The flowers this week are really beautiful and have been donated by Sharon for her mum's birthday, which is on the 3rd of September, was on the 3rd of September. So our really happy birthday to her. We really like it when she comes. Okay, also we have more birthdays. It was Chelsea Creasy's birthday on the 2nd of September. And it will be Ira's, I hear today, but it will be Ira Fernando's birthday on the 9th, which I think is Thursday. Um, also, yesterday was the wedding anniversary of Maxine and Jimmy Gervier. 17 years. Congratulations to them. Have we got any other birthdays today or during the week or we just missed? Anyone? No? Any good news you want to share? I'll make a favour to you. Those of you who remember Muriel, um, her oldest daughter is getting married tomorrow. Oh! Some of you might remember Mary, but she's getting married um, tomorrow. Oh, oh, lovely. oh that's it's lovely. Last year, but it was delayed. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. We, lo- oh, we still miss Muriel. That's wonderful. Yeah. Great. Does anyone else got anything? No? Okay. There is a thank you in the notices for everyone. You've been really wonderful with your support and your prayers. Thank you so much because it went as well as it could have gone. And oh, there she is. Yeah, um, she's running everything now. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, next week's service will be led by Reverend Charles and it will be Holy Communion and our um, AGM, our annual general church meeting. Um, also, our Harvest Festival service will be on Sunday the 26th of September. Um, we've now got notices again, which is nice, more no- going back to normality, and there are details of the harvest and the sort of things we might want um, for do- and where the donations will be going. Um, Bible studies are going to recommence. The first one will be on Thursday this week, the 9th of September, here at 2.30, and they'll be led by Reverend Charles, and the second one will be on the 7th of October. Pretty sure we're still going to be in this church by then, so. And worship group, for all members of the worship group who can stay behind or feel able, there'll be a practice after service today in the chapel. Thank you. Thank you for all those uh, good news notices. We're going to stand again and sing our final hymn, which I hope sums up uh, what we've been trying to say this morning. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. We stand and sing, let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. Number 409.
closing prayer. Let us pray. God of salvation, you open the way to life by offering us unconditional love. We rejoice in our freedom, our healing and our hope. Teach us to practice inclusion and be open to others where all are welcome. In Jesus' name, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.